Welcome to Carbon TV's News and Views, Ireland's first live web TV weekly news programme with over 2 million viewers worldwide and we are on a web TV site near you. I'm Anya Duffy and we bring the programme to you weekly on Friday 7 to 8 Greenwich Mean Time. Each week we take a look at what is going on in the county and invite guests to chat live in the studio. If you have an event you want us to know about or an issue you'd like discussed, please email us at drumlinmedia at gmail.com. So, anything interesting going on, please do let us know. I'd like to say thank you to last week's guests in the studio, a very interesting and informative interview with councillors Winston Bennett and Clifford Kelly and community activist Chris Kirk. Topic was on Cavan as a tourist destination and what about Killipine for Forest Park? That's what it was about. Now, if you want to see that interview, log on to Drumlin Media forward slash Vimeo and uh, you would see our recent uploads. And indeed, if you want to see any of our past programmes, you can go on to Drumlin Media uh, forward slash Vimeo and you can see all our programmes. And now I'd like to tell you as well that Cabin TV is on 24-7 and you will see the most recent programmes anytime you log on to Cabin TV. I'd like to say thank you to my resident photographer, that's Martin Sheridan Photography Bailibra, who provides the weekly backdrop, that's the scene behind me. And I'd like to say again that if there's anybody out there who would like to send in your photograph, email it to us and uh, the location where it was taken and if there is a story behind it. And it will be on the screen for the duration of the programme. Again, you can email that to drumlamedia at gmail.com. And again, as we do every week, we here in Cabin TV say hello to all our viewers all over the world who log on during the week to see what's going on in Cabin. And you too can email us with your news and views from anywhere in the world. This week, I want to mention Margaret and Cody O'Brien in Sudbury, Ontario, Canada. And to the rest of the O'Brien family, and that's her dad, Tom, and her sisters, Erin and Noreen, and all their respective families. And I'd like to say also a big hello to Jamie O'Reilly from Valenia, uh, who returned to work in Waterloo in Belgium last Monday. Now, we have a great programme lined up for you this week. The glamorous, beautiful and very successful Marilyn O'Connor from Sligo is going to tell us how we can live the life we really want to. And also some two strong men and one strong lady are going to tell us all about Crestoni Fair and tractor pulling. So do stay with us. Plenty going on in County Cavan this week and let's have a look at see some of the local town news and we'll see what's going on. Now in Ghana the postponed Rosie Run is rescheduled for this Sunday, that's August the 7th. It's a 5k run and it starts from St Bridges Community Centre at 11.45, you must register at 10 o'clock. This, uh, this run just gets bigger every year and all funds raised from that go to Irish Motor and Euro Association. In Kilishandra, the Loft Youth Cafe Drop-In Centre is open for youth between 12 and 18 years of age. That's every Wednesday in the community centre and uh, they're free to play pool, have a mineral, have a chat, watch Xbox, whatever. And that only costs two euros and it's a place for youth to go on Wednesdays. Bomboy is organising a community festival this autumn and if you're in that area and you'd like to get involved, there is a meeting next Wednesday night in the Resource Centre at 9 o'clock. And Bell Turbot is going yoga mad. There are yoga classes in the Good Store Bell Turbot Railway Station on Mondays 7 to 8. And Kirtan Yoga, that's a meditation workshop. It's in the Town Hall Civic Centre this Saturday evening from 5 to 8. And uh, all levels of participants are, we are welcome. And Kingscourt Social Services outing is August the 26th. It's a mystery tour. To book it, you must uh, to go on it. You must book your place with Jim, and we'll call out his mobile number. And it's 086 224 1233. Don't ask me where it is. It's a mystery tour. Now tonight in Killancarry there is a trad concert, and uh, 40 young trad musicians perform after their week-long summer school down there, and that's in the leisure centre in Killancarry in Killancarry tonight. And congratulations to a young lady out there, uh, Karen Gilroy from Shannon and Banya, who launched her first album in Brady's Lounge in Banya last night, uh, last Saturday night, and it's called "The One That Plays the Music," and that's available on CD if you'd like to have, if you'd like to get a copy of it. Mola Cross News: The craft group meeting is on next Wednesday, that's August the 13th, and there will be demonstrations on many crafts, example like knitting, crochet, group, uh, sorry, quilt making, eggshell painting, collage, and basket making. That all starts at 8:30. Curry Gallen wishes Seamus O'Rourke, yes, the one-man show there, the very best as he sets off to take part in the Edinburgh Fringe Festival uh, in the end of August. And he's taking his one-man show, Porrick Potts Guides to Walking. So best of luck there, Seamus. 
Well-known credit union lady Sandra McCormick is taking on a big challenge this November. She will travel to Addis Ababa in Africa and in November to take part in the Great Ethiopian Run. And this is to raise funds for the South Help Africa. Sandra's having a fundraiser tomorrow night in the Luna Bar in Cavan Town. She has to raise 2,000 euros. So it would be a great night of crack, she tells us. It would be a great night of crack, spot prizes and music by DJ, Call, B DJ Paul Cox. Please, please do go along and support. Drumgoon hosts traditional music sessions this Monday night, uh, every Monday night in the Gallon Ray House. That starts at nine o'clock and all musicians are welcome. Now, if you're looking for something to do next weekend, put Crestoni's track fair and tractor pull running event in your diary and we'll have a little bit more on that later. Two weeks ago, we had a great interview with a young uh, Ballet James Duff guy called Jamie McGrath. Jamie wrote his book and it's called Let's Talk About Anxiety, a 20-year-old story. That interview, folks, and I'm telling you this, that interview had 600 views in 20 countries in three days. Uh, just to let you know that. And tomorrow in Easton's, Jamie is launching his book. So if you topple along there to Easton's from 12 o'clock, you can meet and we'll greet Jamie. He will be signing copies. And please support as some of the proceeds go to So Sad. And as you know, So Sad means save, save our sons and daughters. On that note as well, I'd just like to say if you or anybody you know is anxious or indeed suffering from depression, please contact any of the following free line, uh, sorry, helpline numbers. I'm just going to call them out. You've got So Sad, you've got Aware, Samaritans, and the Samaritans is 116123. You've got Console, which is 1800-666666, and Team Line, which is 1800-833-634. They are all free line numbers, and everybody and anybody can use those numbers. Okay, so let's go on to what's on in Cavan this weekend. Of course, the Taste of Cavan is on this weekend and it's in the Equestrian Centre. It opened today and it goes on right through till Sunday. Uh, 35,000 people passed through the event, attended the event last year, passed through its doors. Uh, this year hopes to surpass that as it is taking advantage of the venue being in the Equestrian Centre. And uh, what's it all about, you might say? It's a showcase of the best of food and food produce in County Cavan. The event will host hundreds of stands and stalls demonstrating exactly what is produced in County Cavan. Cavan does produce some of the best artisan foods in the country. Go along there and you see you've got Goldie's cheese, Bowley's cheese, you've got all sorts of things. There will be demonstrations by celebrity chefs and indeed Cavan's own celebrity chef, Nevin Maguire, will be there. Now the Chamber of Commerce has laid on a free train, that's what they call it, a train, and that's a bus. And uh, that's going from the taxi rank in Main, Ta in Main Street and it's leaving on the hour every half hour to go out to the equestrian centre and returns on the hour every half hour. Okay, do you want me to explain that to you again? So just go along to the taxi rank in Cavan on the half hour, you get the bus out there, and if you want to come back into Cavan, go on the hour and you get back into, into Cavan Town. It's a day promised for, it's a day out promised for all the family. Admission is only five euro per person and children are free. So a great day, uh, a great weekend for Cavan and indeed the, ca the taste of Cavan. Red Hills Carnival on the Green is also this weekend and that starts this evening at 7.30, which is just about now. Cavan Rose and that's Leonita Sheridan officially launches that tonight. And they have got music tonight by a um, by country band. We're moving on on the Yorkshire Cuban Brunch. Yes, tonight uh, we've got music by D Derek, Derek Ryan's country band. Tomorrow you've got street entertainment, you've got a pet farm, bowl bowling competition, Red Hills, Red Hills Gun Club have got a display, football tournaments, Sissy's ki Kitchen. And uh, tomorrow during the day the Madass Mules play. And tomorrow night the barbecue will in the big tent will be with the Glenside Cayley Band. And on Sunday the final music will be shot by Sean Caffrey and that will be followed by our own Eamon Jackson. So all roads lead to Red Hills this weekend as well. So plenty of festivals and fairs on this weekend and we do hope the weather does get a little bit better. Okay, that takes me to my first item on the show this evening. And I just want to tell you all about Cristoni. And that's rolling on with the, the next slide. Okay. Crestoni is a peaceful, picturesque little village. It's about uh, eight, nine miles from Kilishandra, four miles from Cavantown, and only three minutes from Balnia. And it's one of the few places that did not spoil its beauty during the run of the Celtic Tiger. 
It has managed over the years to keep its unique beauty of huge, hundreds of years old trees. It had it, its own train station back in the 1950s and 1960s, and indeed the station house is still there. And some of its most notable features, like Lismore Lodge, is at the present time being restored to its former beauty. And indeed the most notable uh, feature about is Cristoni is that all the houses in the little tiny village are on the same side. Thus the saying, all to one side like Cristoni. Now, we're going to give you a little view and a little taste of exactly what Cristoni looks like. Have a look at this. Tony Brady, I'd like to invite you to join me here in Crestoni Village, a quiet, picturesque village situated about eight kilometres from Cavan and about two kilometres from Balignan on the Cavan Kilijandu Road. Quiet it may be today, but on Sunday, the 16th of August, is the very first Crestoni Fair and Family Fun Day. Our friends at Crestoni Tractors have some very unique ways to entertain you on this very special day. And with my cameraman, Mick Goldrick, we're going to take a little walk round the corner to Crustoni Tractors to see what they have in store for the Crustoni Fair and Family Fun Day. So come along and join us. Well, that was a little glimpse of Crestoni. And well done to Tony Brady there, a former presenter on Cavan TV, doing a piece of camera. Well done. And you did see the beauty of Crestoni. It does, it still has got its unique beauty of the stone houses and, uh, and uh, its beautiful trees and nice quiet scenery out there. Now, with me in the studio, I've got my th next, my, my first three guests. I'd like you to welcome, I've got um, Kenneth North. Emily Griffith and uh, Nigel McDowell from Crestoni and they are on the committee in Crestoni and that's running uh, the first time, this is the first time a fair in recent years and it's Crestoni Fair and Family Fun Day and tractor pulling competition as well. Guys you're very welcome to the studio, thank you thank for you coming in you. this evening. Thank you. Okay first up, Crestoni is looking really well. Kenneth, isn't it? It is, it is it's looking as well as it has been in the last hundred years, I'd say. And, you know, it is true, Crestoni didn't lose the run of itself in the roar of the Celtic tiger and plant housing estates everywhere. It managed to keep its trees and keep its unique beauty, didn't it, really? That's true, yes. It's, 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 it's looking even better, I'd say, now it is. It yeah. is actually looking better yeah. with the roads around it. Yeah. And great to see as well, uh, Nigel, that day uh, Lismore Lodge has actually been restored to its former beauty. It had got slightly run down and a bit sad looking but now it's been done up by its new owner and indeed it's going to look really well when it's complete. Cheers, it's great to see these old buildings being done up and brought back to their former glory. It'd be a pity to lose such culture, such heritage. Yeah. So it's good to have. And uh, also um, in there, what the old schoolhouse is looking really well as well, isn't it in there? Uh, Andrew Gould's place That's is looking right. really well there alongside the river as well. Anyway, to tell us all about uh, Crestoni Fair and, and uh, Fun Day, that's Sunday next, August the 16th, and uh, it's going to be there uh, up behind Crestoni Tractor Garage. And uh, Emily, you're involved on the committee. Yes. And um, you're looking after all things, uh, the fun things on the day. You've got lots planned for children. Yes, for children we have uh, face painting. We have a uh, fancy nail painting for the children as well, and bouncing castles. We have a dog show, which is for children adul and adults. We have uh, hot food on the day and beverages. And we have um, a burger train coming for the, the hot food, like it'll be a, a train. A real train? Um, well, yeah, it has wheels and it moves, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I hope you it don't start trying to pull the train around the place <laughs> as well. <laughs> but one of the unique things you're actually doing is, is this tractor pulling thing. Now, I know you had to do work on that and uh, to get ready and prepare for it. Kenneth, it really is somebody pulling the tractor, is it? It is. Uh, it's, a, it's a unique thing to, to us anyway in the fact that uh, you go to all these other tractor pulling events and the tractor uh, is set to pull a, a sledge along the ground. There's no actual measurement. It, it all works with how, s how fast the man pushes the weight up on the sledge. But our, our device will actually measure what weight in kilos your tractor is pulling. Okay, yeah. so you actually had to get something ready, Nigel. You were down, you, were, you constructed it. I know we're going to see maybe a little bit of video of that, but uh, tell us about that. And that's going to be up in the field behind 
Crestoni Tractor Garage. And we'll talk about the venue in a minute, but tell us about the thing you've prepared up there. Uh, absolutely. That was uh, really Joe Abbott's brainchild from Crestoni Tractors. Um, it was really derived from an axle of a lorry, which he turned into a winch, which in turn uh, let the tractor off slowly, that um, the weight could be calculated. The, t the machine has got a, a load cell on it, which will give us a reading in kilos what it's actually pulling. And the idea of this winch letting it out slowly is to get the maximum kilos, the maximum pull out of the tractor before the wheels spin and it loses its grip. So as Kenneth was saying, uh, no one has actually ever done this before. This is, uh, this is a new one. You have tractor pulling shows, and this one is uh, just unique. It's the best okay, way to I think actually we've got some video that Mick has done on that, and uh, we can bring that up on the screen now to show us exactly what you're talking about, Nigel. Absolutely. There we go. what this uh, apparatus is all about. Uh, this is uh, an invention of Joe Abbott's uh, Crestoni tractor. I don't know, some would say madness, but <laughs> I don't know, it's, 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 it's genius. Genius, it's genius, genius, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, it is, it's, it's really good idea. Down the years, you've had tractor pulling competitions where they pull a slow over field. Mm -hmm. But this contraption will actually tell the tonnage or in kilos what the tractor is with the pull. Okay. So it's, it's, it's just a novel idea that hasn't been done before. So, so you, you have a winch here. Mm. That's yeah. Yeah, okay. you can call it a winch. Yeah, yeah. all right. And that, th that is connected to the back of, of the tractor. Yeah. So the, the idea of it is a tractor will pull its best before the wheels actually start to spin. Spin. Okay. So the idea of the construction or the winch is to let him out nice and slowly. And uh, when he's going along nice and slowly, the driver or that driver of the winch can actually slow down the pole and grind them to a slow halt. And by grinding him the tractor to a slow halt, he'll actually uh, register on a, a load cell, which is a machine for measuring the weight that's okay. been put on the end of the cable. We actually haven't got it here, but yeah, yeah. we will we'll actually tour them on the day. So that, uh, that gives you an exact idea of what tractor pulling is. Great stuff. This, uh, this is unique. Th nobody else has done anything like that in Cavan before. Well, if they have, we haven't heard tell of it. We, we <laughs> think we're the first. But Joey's invention, like nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he better patent it quick. <laughs> 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 okay, so just tell us about the um, just tell us about the venue. Like um, a lot of a lot of work. You started your committee back in March or April, so you put a lot of work. How many are on your committee? I'd say okay. there's about sixteen in total. Sixteen. Sixteen dedicated yeah. workers. Yeah. Okay, so um, on the day you're going to have uh, the venue. Just tell them, what the, um, Kenneth, exactly where if people are going to Crystal and they want to find out where to go. Well, uh, wh when you arrive into the village of Crostoni, if you're coming from Kilishandra, you don't actually have to go into the village, but from all other roads, you, you just uh, carry on on the road to Kilishandra for a few yards, and you see Crostoni tractors. And just immediately on the Kilishandra side of the garage, there's a, there's a little road, and I I just there's a field up there, we'll park any amount of cars. We're, we're ample parking, ample safe parking, parking, safe parking, off parking. The road parking. Yes, and the people can make it safely into the, into the field where, where the events are. Uh, from the from the car park without go going back to the road is safe for families and children the walks and okay. we're, we're now i know i heard I heard you talk and we were talking before the program gone you've got some spectacular things organized like emily you were telling me about something there and um, there's a um, digger land for the bigger children now this is a surprise this is a keeping this is this a mystery thing or something uh, it's uh, yes and there's <laughs> lots of other surprises <laughs> <laughs> okay so digger land does this this boys with toys kind of thing mm -hmm. it's a little bit yeah. i'm afraid <laughs> they've let us out a woman up in a digger now absolutely we have no, no problem. problem as long as they bring their two year with them <laughs> 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 two years to drive a digger for how long can you drive a digger for two years well, i suppose it's it depends on their driving ability so <laughs> <laughs> well, if they actually get to drive the digger yeah absolutely what, what we have is uh, we've uh, a couple of little jobs for them to do um, like an obstacle course kind of thing. well <laughs> almost almost uh, one of the things we have is um, going back to our childhood we used to have a tie where we get this a little electrical wire which zigzagged up and down on a frame and you were given a little loop which you had to run along the zigzags but we're doing that with a digger now and That'll I'll tell you interesting I'm uh, telling you so now um, we'll just talk about uh, folk in along there. It's at 12 o'clock. You can start, people can start arriving there about 12 o'clock on Sunday. And uh, Emily, give us an idea of admission there and um, how you're actually going to raise the money on the day as well. Yes, um, adults is 10 euro and children under 18 or teenagers is free. But then if you're uh, uh, doing the tractor, uh, tractor events or whatever, it's 20 euro registration. 
and that covers you for the day like that covers mm -hmm. your that's your entry fee for for the tractor on yourself okay so just to get that right it's 10 euros per adult yes you don't have you and um, children for under 18 Enough free. free yes and if you're doing tractor pull that's 20 yeah. euros now emily a little bird or maybe it was a big bird told me that you are the only lady so far that's going to do a bit of that so that's what I've been told. <laughs> I think you've frightened all the competition off, maybe, have you? A little bit. <laughs> you're secretly out practicing pulling tractors during when you're, <laughs> no, not, not, really. when you're not down at Christmas. Can't get the I women think. down, anyways. <laughs> okay, so this is the first fair you've had in a long time, and uh, and Kennedy told me, uh, well, there was one back in 1940, but not. Needless to say, none of us were around then. No, so, no. well, what was it like in 1940 in Crestoni? Now, we'll just get a little bit of, of history there in Crestoni as well. Crestoni is a lovely little village. Um, it hasn't changed much with with the moving time, with the change in times, but it had a, its trains, a train station in those days, and indeed the station house is still there very much as it was then. And that'd be a great thing to do up if if things worked out there. But uh, tell us about the train station. Well, the train station is it's Stop, it's, it's, be, yeah. it's about half a, half a mile or less from the the middle of the village. I I think the last train run in 1961 or so I believe I wasn't around to see it, and uh, it, it it was a really vibrant place with its own post office and and uh, shops and I, I actually think there was more of a population when the train was there, but uh, that's. I still can't. Uh, I wasn't there. I don't. Re I don't remember. <laughs> okay, so. we believe you. We yeah. believe you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Custody is a handy place to be. Like you're, you're as I say, you're like you're near Kill. You have to go through it to get to Kilishandra. You're near Cavan Town. You're near the N55 when you go out on the bypass. That's true. Uh, uh, Cavan Town is uh, is only between five and ten minutes, depending on how you drive. And, and uh, uh, carefully, Balignan, I hope. Uh, oh, carefully, yes. The road. And uh, Balanya, uh, a couple of minutes, and mm. Kilishandra, and a uh, uh, very good neighbourhood of people as well. You know, all very helpful people and yes. willing to help. That's that's the thing you'd like yeah. to say about Christoni yeah. as well. A lot of the original families from the the, the hinterland are all still there. Oh they're yes, they're still there. Next generation and, and their generation of children is coming on as well. So that leads for good community spirit, doesn't it? Oh, it does indeed. Yes. yes. And so the businesses as well, like the Chantilly, and you know, like well, it's always owned by local people. That's true. Yes. And like Christone is a great village. Now, Nigel, you still got something else up your sleeve there. You <laughs> want to tell us about the text, your text line thing? Absolutely. Uh, part of this fair is our part of the pulling competition. We actually have it up on Done Deal, and the Farmers Journal is helping us out with it as well. What it is is, you you can text into a, a lane. There it is uh, on the oh screen, Nigel. You talk us yeah. through that now. Um, you text in to the number five seven eight zero two. Um, we give you an option of eight tractors. Uh, they're actually on done deal. The pictures of the particular tractors that's doing the pulling are on done deal. We have tractors from 400 horsepower back to 130, which is very, very rare to get 400 horsepower. So there'll be a lot of people really interested in this sort of power. But um, the way the text line works is you come in, you text your 57802, uh, you write in the word tractor, and then you follow it by your choice of tractor, which one is your favourite tractor, and how much you think is capable of pulling. So if you like the first tractor, which is a fence, so you go to choice A, and then you go um, what weight you think it'll pull in kilos. Um, close the text off, and you should get a, a return uh, text thanking you for the money and thanking you and letting you know that you've paid the money to us through the phone evasion lanes. So. Um, we have got, uh, as I say, eight tractors from local contractors and farmers who really wants to show their wares and we're very thankful to get such tractors because a lot of them is worth, there's tractors that are worth two, two, three hundred thousand even. So uh, it's, uh, we better not scrape them on the day. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> There's a wee bit of banter going on as well between who can pull the most. Okay, so this is a fundraiser as well. Absolutely, the text absolutely. That, that this is part of the fundraiser. So it's simple enough, really. You get the list of the tractors and you text your tractor. And with some kind of a weight, Correct. what do you think the tractor will pull? Correct. Okay, so I guess guys would be really good at that, wouldn't yeah. they? Absolutely, okay. and it's all to good causes. Yeah, okay. Now, part of this as well, you are not doing this for the fun of it. You're doing it to raise money for CAPS. And uh, you're also doing it for cystic fibrosis, isn't that right? Any yeah. money you, you have left over after your costs, uh, you're going to give 
Touched Saturdays. And we're going to have two ladies from that coming in to tell us about that. Now, I want to say as well, I want to ask you, just we're going to go for a break now, but quickly, uh, you don't really have a big sponsor on the day. You've just thrown yourselves into it. Now, do you want to, Nigel, do you want to have a word <laughs> with the viewers out there? You want to talk sponsorship? Absolutely. Um, we really need a, a major sponsor uh, to help us along. We, um, at Natal, a small sponsors, big sponsors, we need money. Uh, as I say, two good charities uh, affecting people in the locality all over Ireland, but we really need your help. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, the people from uh, Costoni, and uh, uh, we're going to take a quick break now. Just stay with us because we've got uh, Bernie Nelson and uh, Lorraine O'Neill coming in to talk with the guys. See you. Cabin Crystal Hotel provides four star accommodation on the edge of Cabin Town. Located conveniently on the Dublin Road, just 60 minutes away from Dublin. With 85 beautifully appointed bedrooms and a number of luxurious suites. We offer wedding packages. With our one wedding a day policy, we guarantee to make yours a special day. Enjoy a meal at our award-winning Oak Plus One restaurant or have a drink in the atrium or residence bars. Feeling energetic, you can work out in Zest Health and Fitness Club or maybe pamper yourself and visit Utopia Health and Beauty Clinic or Aviva's Hair Salon, both located on site. Situated only five minutes from Cavan Town Centre and local amenities. Cavan Crystal Hotel, gateway to Ireland's Lakelands. Hello, yeah. <laughs> Hello, yo, this is Prince Michael. You watch on, on Calvin TV. Catch ya! Welcome back, you're watching Calvin TV's News and Views. And this week we're doing an item on Crestoni. And uh, we had the guys in the studio there with Emily Griffith, uh, Kenneth North and Nigel McDool tell us all about Crestoni's fair, uh, fair and Family Fun Day and the tractor pulling competition, which is unique. Uh, uh, Kenneth, as he said, he didn't hear about anybody else doing it but the way they're doing it, so that's good. Now, and as they say, they are doing it for a good cause. They are doing it for cabin, autism, parent support and for cystic fibrosis. Now, with me, the two ladies in the studio, and as, as, I we, as we say, we, we speak to the people who are on the cold face of working with things. And we've got Lorraine O'Neill, a uh, very well-known fundraiser for cystic fibrosis, and uh, we all know Mia as well. We all know Mia. And uh, we've got Bernie, and Bernie works out there with the CAPS, as it's called, Cabin Autism Parent Support. And you work in the cold face as well. You've got your, your child as well who needs uh, support. So well done, ladies. You're glad that Costoni picked you to get the, the fundraising from this. 
that right your way in? I'm sure you are. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this year especially, um, like at the minute we're getting new rooms in Cavan General. Um, hopefully uh, they'll start October, they'll start by the end of this year, um, two new rooms for, the, for kids. So this year of all years, it's very important that we have money there, that you know there's no excuse to come back, you know, for the HSC to come back and say, well, you know, we don't have the money for that. So when, when people are thinking about it, yeah, it's it's fantastic like that we can yeah. get a few pound. Yeah, you've done really well in Cavan General Hospital. Like you've got a new suite in the last couple of years. And the, uh, there was outpatient. an opening of an outpatient suite. Very good. A great respiratory department there as well. Mm. Um, we had we were very lucky that we got outpatients, and it's beside respiratory in Cavan, mm. which is which is what's needed. So it means that when our patients go into the hospital, that they're not walking around yeah. to the hospital. Cross, cross. They're not. There's no risk of picking mm. up something the else. Yeah. So now we have two outpatient room, which is best practice. Um, we're now ahead of other hospitals, which four years ago we were behind hospitals. Okay. You know, so just it's just a quick question there, uh, Lorraine. Um, uh, did uh, you worked and you got raised money for this? Did the HSC match you with money? Is this totally voluntary? Then? No, no, it's matched. It's matched. Oh, that's good. Um, when we were getting outpatients. Um, the it was it was meant to be half and half, and then the HSE helped us out more. I think because they knew, you know, there was more. There was tr there's three projects needed, so you had the outpatients needed, and then you had the kids department, and then you have adults. So now we're in the second phase. When the third phase will come, we don't know. So for that reason, and because there was such a need, like in our region, we had 48 people with cystic yeah. fibrosis, which is an awful lot in one in one small region. But then we're taking in people from um, well, you know, all of Cavan, part of Monaghan, uh, part of Leitrim, part of Longford, part of Mead. We're taking in a very wide area. And what's happening now as well is other other hospitals, other people that attend other hospitals like the idea of Cavan. So you, so you have a template, yeah. you a set template. Yeah. And yeah. out of the city, actually, I think Cavan is the first <laughs> Uh, hospital that actually has done that with the separate rooms and the separate suites. Well done, well done to all the work of cystic fibrosis. I think we've got some pictures to come up there with that. Uh, can we do that yet? Yep, here we go. That there that is terrific. the ladies' marathon this year where we had 65. The, the, the 65 roses is cystic fibrosis week. The reason it's called cystic 65 roses is because it's the way children can pronounce cystic fibrosis. So this year we had 65 ladies from Cotill and Monaghan. Um, who travelled up to Dublin for the Ladies Martin, um, took part and obviously had, hadn't handed us over a cheque there. Um, yeah, it was 65 women, you know, it was, a, it was a serious amount. This is the Derry Martin, I'm there in the front, absolutely exhausted. Um, we did the D Derry Martin this year for Derry, it was the first year to do Derry, there was 15 of us did it, hardest Martin I've ever did. Very, very hard. And the Quilka Challenge, of obviously. Course, that's a year, yeah, that's an annual, that's an annual thing. thing. That's brilliant. Yeah. That's 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 annual and yeah. that's getting bigger and better every year. Every year, yeah, it's okay. a great one. And then the Skoda Cycle, which is going to be another annual event. Um it's happened it happened there about a month ago. And Skoda has backed us now and they're they they've put us into their annual race. So that'll be an annual thing that'll go on every year because not only like do we need these facilities, but there's also care and there's also um, the stuff that people with cystic fibrosis need all the time that they might necessarily not get from the HSE okay. so at least our organisation can help them can you know after. can look after them exactly. Okay, to bring you in there Bernie we've had you on before and it's great to have you back this evening thank mm -hmm. you you're looking very well I like the hair. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, CAFs Cabal Autism Parent Support, indeed, and like Lorraine's uh, CF is doing as well, you are doing something for children uh, that otherwise will not be done, like the, the respite house where people can go and stay there, isn't that right? Uh -huh. Yeah, well, that's just one. But mm. mainly now at the moment, it's all to do with the uh, summer camps and trying to keep all these kids busy, you know, How all through the it summer. Going? It's going fantastic. Like, we're just exhausted with it now. We have two more weeks coming up. We've done our three weeks in the Holy Family School. Uh, we've been running uh, Wednesday, Wednesday camps, you know, just for the higher functioning kids, just going off at nine in the morning and coming back at five and six in the evening. We were up in Causey Farm on Wednesday there, bog hopping, and they just uh, absolutely love it. Like it's just a matter of trying to keep them busy because it's just all about routine and there it is gives nothing parents like that. a break as well. When and it away. gives parents and their siblings because I mean in all fairness if there's two or three kids in the house and they're on holidays and they want to go places and then you there's not everywhere or anywhere you can go 
with a child with autism if they you know it, it do, the needs are not met so at least they know that if it, when they're gone away on our trips or whatever you know that they can plan like we have an end of summer camp starts now the week after next and uh, that they're within three days then people know that they're back into into um, mm. school so the parents are all focusing on doing other things with the other kids and you know that kind of thing so but it's all just like Lorraine says so frustrating like you mm. mean you're trying to be a parent and you're trying to do all this and trying to get people to listen to you and Can only I ask you one question Bernie now uh, in relation and mm. um, just to give us an idea uh, Lorraine is saying that the HSC will match some funding you are totally uh -huh. totally no. voluntary every penny yeah. you get you're not you've no money no funds from no, anywhere no. you are totally yeah doing that's, your that's own just work. giving me a thought there right okay like and I mean the HSC recommend our group all the time saying there's a great group out there that you know you get great support out there so mm. if they're willing to say we give good support why are they not willing to say well you know yeah. well you know there's just so much to go around and there's so very little yeah. to go around but i'm sure you're delighted that these good yes, folks these strong yes, men yes, and strong women yeah. from Custoni have brought you in to raise funds so then we'd like to all make it to be a, a really successful day so that it, that it'll work for you so have you just Briefly, just to get your, your five minutes of fame now, <laughs> uh, have you any events coming up you'd like to tell folk about out there? Fundraisers, I mean. Any fundraisers? Um, we have uh, 45 people going up to do Helen Back in Bray the 12th of September. Um, they're going to go out doing little... Uh, um, I don't go out with sponsor cards or buckets. We try to run events, coffee mornings and cake sales and just little events around the place. So we have 45 people going to be going around doing little events for the next few weeks on that. And then the Dublin City Martin is the 26th of October and there's a group as well getting ready for that. Okay, now Bernie, I know this summer uh, you do your, your walk. Yeah, we've had a walk from Mine walk. Hall, from the backyard of Mine Hall. We had a walk a few weeks ago. Uh, there's, we like that, I try to encourage parents to, you know, to take on different... Uh, I have always organised the mini marathon in Dublin in June, and that's always a, a, a good one for mm. us. So we had 52 women. Uh, no, we had 50 women and two men-ish women <laughs> <laughs> did it with us, uh, which they really... You won't ask. Yeah, no, 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 they're genuinely men, but they didn't look it on the day. They didn't check it out. But, uh, oh, God, they were very good. But... Uh, we had a marathon and that's I'm 12, 14 years doing the marathon now. Mm. Or f yeah, It's a great money. When women are doing it for themselves on the street. What, 60,000 women pounding the streets mm. raising money yeah, for charity? Yeah, it's brilliant. But we have an event coming up now in, up in Crucial Law. It's in, a, it's in an old cottage belonging to Patricia and Lewis Atchison. Uh, and they give us this cottage. Uh, uh, it's just on the corner there between Kilnick and Cross Keys and Bally Jim stuff. Uh, and the turf fire and oh it's it's just it's always a brilliant day people just come out and sit and chat and uh, scones and tea so it's, it's like it's Daniel O'Donnell's you go there oh and have yeah tea and your mummy's not there yeah yeah you, the, yeah. The you just drop off yeah and there's a cake and all and it brings in a thousand and something every year it's brilliant but look only for the goodness of people that know you yeah. you might forget about it because you okay. wouldn't be doing anything and then Vincent Dolan, another parent of ours, he's running, uh, he's, his annual cycle is in Mullahorn. I'm not just sure, Vincent, now what date it's on, but anyway, follow us on Facebook and you'll see. We, okay. we have great following on Facebook at the moment. Okay, so as we know, folks, for every charity and for every good cause, fundraising is always ongoing <coughs> and uh, it's the hard part. And I suppose to bring back in the Crustoni folk again, <laughs> just to say that, like, uh, the hard work that you put into the event to, to you know, like, to make it a good event yeah. and uh, it makes it better for you that uh, you're raising money for funds for something that you know and uh, that you know things about as well and, and as you say Cavan. we all know somebody and it stays in Cavan yeah. and we all know somebody who is affected by something or other else because yeah. that is the story yeah. of life so just now okay if you want to sell Crestoni is there anything else anybody from Crestoni would like to say I think you've got some one other thing to talk about you're having a celebrity pull or an Emily against somebody <laughs> pull tell me what's, th what's that about <laughs> there's, a, there's no point in shine out. Uh, well, let's spit it all out now. Absolutely no. Um, Emily, one of our hard-working members on our group, and Andy Dalton. Um, Andy's a big, burly man, good crack, you know, very serious about his tractors. And a bit of a debate broke up one night. Emily reckoned she could drag his tractor around the place for her little Ford, who's a she, by the way. What's it uh, called? 
It's a she. What's a she? It's a she. It's a she, though. But anyways, uh, this bit of a debate got up and Emily reckons she's going to put manners in Andy that OK, day. so that's a big thing on the day, Emily against Andy. That's the plan. Okay. What they're doing is they'll just do a back-to-back -back pull and see who will drag each other, who will win the Togo war. That's the best way I'll put it. OK. Uh, on the day, we'll be selling, um, we'll be selling little uh, badges and you can buy one for Emily or one for Andy. <laughs> so whichever one you think is going to win, oh, you buy the badge. Oh, you can them on the day. Buy the badge. <laughs> you want to be safe and buy two badges, wouldn't you? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you want to be really free and PC? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. so that's it. Now that's, that's it for the folks from Crestoni. Uh, Crestoni Fair and Family Fun Day and Tractor Pulling. Great day. That's going to be next Sunday. The, uh, what's that, the 16th? The 16th. Well done. And one last thing, Nigel, you do, you do, if there's anybody out there, you do want a, a major sponsor Absolutely, we to need help you to get through this and maybe to, to, to give you a kickstart for next year as well. Absolutely. We haven't got as far as next year yet, but there is a possibility, so there is. We'll just have to find a new team. <laughs> but uh, no, if we can get good sponsors, it'll make such a difference to the whole event. Okay. Because when you're trying to get out there uh, on small budgets to advertise and that, it's, it's no joke. And, Thanks to the Help Yourselves and, and other places like It'll the It'll be up for everybody to see on Facebook, like and share Absolutely. and let like everybody to know about it. Well, I hope we've, uh, we've given out most of the information. Do, are we leaving anything out? No? Just, oh, just, okay. Just the ladies. Well, there's only one lady. We don't mind how many ladies come with us, actually. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> you them can accommodate <laughs> them all, Joe. Yeah. All right, uh, yeah. sorry, Ken. Yeah. And you've got parking for them. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you can accommodate <laughs> any size, any make of a tractor. Yes. Be all done. And by the way, it sounds very specific. There'll be no cheating. Oh, no cheating. That's only just an existing customer. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no cheating. All above board, all, everything measured to the dot. Okay, great day. Great day. Something different to look forward out there uh, in Crestoni. Uh, so I'd like to say thanks to you all for coming in and I wish the two ladies, uh, Bernie and Lorraine, the best of luck. Uh, no, thanks, the man. best wishes with your organisations. Well done to the work you have done for your, your uh, relevant organizations and keep up the good work okay we're going to go for a break and as i said i made reference to in the beginning of the program <laughs> uh, we've got the glamorous beautiful and very successful marilyn o'connor to tell us how you can live the life that you want we're going to go for a break but please do come back Seven crystal hotel provides four-star accommodation on the edge of cabin town located conveniently on the dublin road just 60 minutes away from dublin with 85 beautifully appointed bedrooms and a number of luxurious suites. We offer wedding packages. With our one wedding a day policy, we guarantee to make yours a special day. Enjoy a meal at our award-winning Oak Plus One restaurant or have a drink in the atrium or residence bars. Feeling energetic, you can work out in Vest Health and Fitness Club, or maybe pamper yourself and visit Utopia Health and Beauty Clinic, or Aviva's Hair Salon, both located on site. Situated only five minutes from Cavan Town Centre and local amenities. Cavan Crystal Hotel, gateway to Ireland's Lakeland. Hello, yeah. <laughs> Hello, yo, this is Prince Michael. You watch on, on Calvin TV. Catch ya!
welcome back. You're watching Cabins and Bees News and Views, a great full studio this evening. Now, as I said, I have my guest, my second guest sl guest slot, and that's Marilyn O'Connor, the beautiful and <laughs> gorgeous You're very kind, Marilyn yeah? <laughs> O'Connor. And Marilyn was a guest on the programme before, and that time, Marilyn, you're after launching your book, that's The right, Legend yeah. of Loch Sheelan. Yeah. So, OK, tell us how it's going. It's doing very well. Um, I'm getting nice reviews from children. The joy I'm getting from here and what children have to say about it has touched me deeply. So I'm very pleased at how it's going. Yeah, and also as well, you would like to mention as well that uh, in, is in October, yeah. you're going to have another book launch, a book launch with a difference. Yeah, on the 16th of October, um, there will be a book launched called We Turn Tears Into Laughter. And that book is written by 15 wonderful, wonderful people who have been touched by cancer, I've mentored them and taught them how to write their story and taught them how to write poetry. And through this workshop that I've designed and run, um, we were producing a book and it'll be one of its kind in Ireland. So it's yeah. a very exciting thing. So you had a workshop, a writing workshop, and yeah. uh, specifically with people suffers, or as they say now, uh, survivors of cancer. Yeah. And they got together and wrote and scald and be in a book. How, how did you get it published, Marla? Or is it go on uh, Amazon? Uh, but because well? I am a published author, I have a good deal going with my my Publishers, own yeah. my own publishers, and th th he was very touched by the the story behind the book. Yeah. <coughs> and was more than happy to publish it. So it's all very exciting. It's actually going to be published in the next couple of weeks. So. That's, that's a really exciting We'll look thing. forward to that. And do send us in a press release of that, Marlon. We'll be looking forward do. to that. <laughs> but Marlon, I know you quite well now. And uh, um, you are a most amazing person. Uh, you s we, s we spoke about your life growing up in Dublin. Mm -hmm. You didn't finish. Now, you are this lady is an author, is, is a published author. And she's also written songs as well. There's, there's nothing she can't do. But this lady didn't finish school. Marlon, please. Explain to the people why I think you're so amazing. Well, I think you've been very kind there, but um, I grew up in Dublin, uh, in the inner city, in Sean McDermott Street. Uh, I had a less than happy childhood, which, you know, um, hasn't, hasn't affected me. I'd like to think I'm quite a well-balanced person. Um, when you say, no, I'm not going to delve into, obviously, I don't want to upset you or, or anything like that, but, um, like... Uh, was there a family unit there or was it, you know, like, was it um, poverty or was it just a school that wasn't right? Or I grew up in a, a very impoverished home and a very, very abusive background. Okay. So just to give people a brief... Yeah, so it was extremely snapshot. abusive and um, extremely impoverished. And uh, I wasn't given the opportunity to go to school very often. And that's a that's a natural gift that a child every child should get is to get yeah. their education no matter what. Marlon, the, you know that they say and all the counsellors say and every self help book says like, what happens to you in your youth forms you. It forms you. It affects you in whatever way you will act when you grow up. So, like for a child to be you know like abused in their own home, like that child doesn't stand a chance really or. In most times the child doesn't stand a chance and it leads on to things like we all know we know the stories we watch the films we read the books you know mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. drug abuse yeah. alcohol abuse the sexual abuse it all travels down to the line because sometimes people just cannot break the circle the circus but you have you're you're amazing i did and, yeah. I, and as i said in the beginning of the program i'm talking too much now folks but i'm just so excited talking to marlon because <laughs> she is a wonderful person and as i said in the beginning is that uh, you can make life the way you want it and we all can do that absolutely but where I, do you go yes i'm i'm no special individual in any shape or form it is for me it was if i i believed if i stayed in the status of victim by allowing my childhood to affect my future my todays and my tomorrows i was allowing those people that abused me and hurt me to still have power over me so I made a very conscious decision at a young age that um, I was not going to let that happen. And, um, but what I did do is I, I continued in abusive relationships for quite a good few years. Maybe you can explain that to people that sometimes when that happens to you, it's the only thing you know, it's the only, it might even seem the norm to some people and that they just kind of attract that to themselves? W absolutely, I totally agree because like in my instance, what had happened was I'd, I'd gone from abusive parents 
into abusive relationships because I didn't know any different. I didn't know my own self-worth. I didn't know my own integrity. My own I didn't know anything other than abuse. And I didn't know that I deserved to be treated any different. And it wasn't until I sought the help of the Domestic Violence Unit uh, many, many, many years into my abuse did I s then start to realise and understand that how I was being treated and how my life was was totally unacceptable because I was at the point where I didn't know what was abuse and what wasn't, what was right, what was wrong. Was it my fault? And it totally became, t totally like it was my fault. I totally blame Victims myself. Victims do blame themselves. And a lot of people yeah. actually do. They, b because the perpetrators will put the onus back on the victim and they will say, oh, you know, if you hadn't have said, if you hadn't have done, and then you end up dissecting yourself the whole time and thinking, oh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have said that or maybe I shouldn't have done that. And you follow that cycle and, you, and it, that's why so many people stay in it because an abuser w in a very, very short time will manipulate their victim. So people say, why, why did you stay so long? Why do you stay? They take, they s in a very, very short time, they strip you of everything you are as a human being. Okay, and we can have that in any, lots of kind of relationships, alcohol, um, drug abuse maybe, uh, mm -hmm. um, what's the other one, verbal abuse, just, just power over people. Yeah, and it's it w what the most shocking thing that I, I have learned through the work that I do is that the amount of abuse that happens with men, domestic violence with men, is, is quite shocking. But unfortunately, men don't speak about it as freely oh, you as mean women as do. Them being the victims. As them being okay. the victim. There's a very high percentage of men in Ireland who are suffering in silence. Okay, let, let, let's me get to grip with your story, Marilyn. Your, your, your decision to uh, break this circle, yes. circuit, uh, was this a slow kind of a one step forward, one back, a slow uh, sort of counselling one, or was it a road to Damascus kind of a moment? Um, th th right, honestly, it was a slow burning process. It was one step forward, ten steps back until then I got to the point where I actually did run the gauntlet and it happened very, very, very quickly. I just thought, right, w with me, I'd been dealing with life and death. I'd got so, so far down that I, I questioned my own mortality. I battled my own mortality because I couldn't see a way out. And it was through an advertisement I heard that, on the radio. When you say that, just to make that clear, did you, were you suicidal? Yeah. Absolutely. That's what you're saying yeah. like that. You're suicidal. Mm -hmm. You wanted to end it because there was no other way. Yeah, absolutely. Th th there was, y y I was so far down, I, I couldn't see, I felt completely trapped, and I just couldn't see an exit door until I heard an advertisement on Cavan Radio, the Shannon Side Northern Sound, um, for uh, uh, domestic violence. And the I will never forget the ad, and it was Don't Suffer in Silence. So one line like that, don't suffer in silence. That was enough to send me, railroaded me straight to make the mm. life changing decisions that okay. I did do. You've done amazing things. I mean, as I say, you didn't finish school and you're, you're an author of, of, of at least three books now. Mm -hmm. You've written songs, you've produced plays, great stuff. Now, tell me, um, we all have actually have it in us yes. to do something, to imagine something. I'm really talking about the law of attraction. People out there, oh no, self-help books, they don't work. But it does work because if you're positive, you will attract positivity. Now you are obviously attracting positivity because you're getting yeah. results and you're successful. Yes, I do. I, d I do believe in the, in the law of attraction, but I'd like to simplify that and take the, the Americanism and the, 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 the airy fairiness out of it. And basically it's a very, very simple thing. We, the biggest thing that stops us moving our lives forward is fear. Um, everything that we undertake, new challenges, n new relationships, changing employment, everything is fear-based because it's of the unknown. And the day you stop feeling fear is the day you stop living, but it's how you deal with that fear that counts. And it's understanding that you have the power within yourself to make the changes, and it's acknowledging that power. We are, as human beings, extremely powerful beings. And it's by looking deep in your heart and deep in your soul, you can find the strength, you can overcome the fear, and you can make those changes. Okay, 
say if I'm somebody who is like just so zonked out on, on uh, drugs, alcohol, combination, whatever, my head is just totally messed up and I'm not thinking clearly, how am I going to break my, my, I don't want to be like that, I don't think anybody ever does, but how am I going to break the circle, how am I going to, to get out of that? Well the first, the first thing, you, you said it yourself, you don't want to be like that, so it, the first thing is acknowledging it. If you acknowledge that you have a problem, so are we talking denial or? Denial um, and unwillingness to want to change, that will keep somebody trapped. That will keep somebody, somebody that doesn't acknowledge that they have a problem or that th there's anything wrong with their life. Well, why would they want to change it? Because they haven't acknowledged it. But if somebody is there and they're having a problem with alcohol or they're having a problem with drugs or having a problem within a relationship. Well, what I'm saying is they wouldn't be thinking, they wouldn't be able, capable of thinking clearly. Why wouldn't they? Oh, no, with, with the alcohol and drugs, you wouldn't be capable of thinking clearly anyway. Um, <coughs> I think the fact that it's acknowledged um, that they have a problem, that is the first That's step. That's the first step. That's the first step. Okay. And then it is re reaching out to groups that are available and who are out there to give them the support and help that they would need is, is the initial thing. Keep your friends and your family close to you, ones that you can trust, even if it's just one person around you that you can trust. And don't be afraid to ask them for help. Okay. Now, the big question, Marlon, I'm not going to keep you too long, and I'd like to thank you for coming all the way over from Sligo. Thank you. <coughs> yeah. And uh, it's great to see you again. It's always great to see you. And uh, you've always done something else <coughs> great. Out there, Marlon, I'm sure there are you know, really desperate people who are in the, the revolving door mm. of a horrible life. And uh, you've been there. Yes. You, you questioned your own mortality. That means, I don't want to live anymore. I want to be dead. Okay, in two minutes, you tell somebody how they can change their life around. The first thing is, <coughs> I would say, is look inside yourself and see the beautiful person that you are. Every one of us is born beautiful. Every one of us is born to be have a great life. So first of all, just look inside yourself and see who you are and then reach out for the help that you need. You have what it takes. You have that beauty inside you. You have the power inside yourself. Don't be afraid. There's nothing to fear, only yourself. So don't be afraid of yourself. Just go out there and get the help that you need. Well, absolutely amazing. Well, there you are, folks. You have to believe this lady because she's been there and she's done that. Marlon, I'd like to thank you very much for coming all the way from Sligo again. And the best of luck with your book launch. Thank it's you. doing something great for, you for your skin. Hmm? I got engaged. And also, you've got engaged recently. I did, yes. And you're going to get married next <coughs> February or March. Yes, we are. Please tell me how you do it. I mean, I've been hanging around <laughs> for years now and I can't get any, anything. Go on. <coughs> Again, it's, 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 it's not being afraid. It's not being afraid to, for a woman to attract a man. It's not, it, it, don't be afraid to be s sexy. Don't be afraid to be feminine. Don't be afraid to be to be a b beautiful woman. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Okay, yeah, not, you're not talking about the outside, you're talking about the inside. Inside, yeah. inside. Yeah. So it all comes from the inside. All comes from the inside. You can be the these inside. things regardless of what, well, you have to look a bit neat on the outside, I guess. <laughs> Do the hair up now and again. But seriously, just to get it on the outside. To get yeah. it on, to get it on the from the inside, inside out. The inside. And you, you too can attract a beautiful man like I have, my lovely palace. Believe me, I've been trying for years. <laughs> Don't go yet until after the programme. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'd like to say thanks, Marlon. It, as always, it's always great to talk to you. And congratulations. Thank you very much, Thank Thank congratulations. you. <laughs> okay. So that's it for this week's program. Great long program. Uh, thanks to the folk from Christoni to Kenneth North, uh, Emily Griffith, and Nigel McDool, and to the two ladies that are going to be the benefits, the benefactors of the, the fundraising, hopefully out in Christoni, and that is Bernie Nelson and uh, Lorraine O'Neill. And uh, great stuff to see Christoni looking so well, as anywhere in Cavan. And if you too have your story about your village, please do let us know. And of course, thanks again to Marlon from the studio. For, for coming in into the studio. So that's it for this week. Uh, plenty on and Calvin this week. Get out and about and join, do and uh, be safe and do take care.